Hey makers, welcome to Muse to Go. My name is Carrie and I'm going to be your instructor for today. The project I'm going to be leading you through is plant fossils. We're going to be using clay, plaster, and some little beauties that you maybe picked up from your backyard or a local grocery store. Now, some of the really essential items that you're gonna to need to have on hand today, of course, are your clay. I'm using an air dry clay that's in white. The color does not matter for today's project, so you can use any type of air dry clay that you have. And what we are also gonna need is plaster of Paris. This is really easy. You can pick this up anywhere, like your local hardware store. They should have batches of it just laying around. Um, other things that are really helpful for today's project. Mixing bowl, we're gonna need a little spoon so that we can mix up our plaster in. I recommend this not be your favorite mixing bowl. This is gonna be a craft mixing bowl, not something that you might use for food later on. And I'm gonna be using a little Tupperware and a piece of paper. Now my Tupperware is round, it's not too big. This is actually gonna be the size of my finished product for today, so keep that in mind when you're picking out your Tupperware shape. And if you have a couple sheets of tin foil, then you'll be ready to go for everything that we're gonna do for our project for today. Now before we get started in on making our clay impressions, I wanna to talk to you a little bit about what kinds of organic materials we wanna be working with for today. So I'm thinking about anything that's botanical, anything flowers, leaves, stems. It doesn't necessarily need to be anything too pretty either. Truly, even weeds, cattails, things that you might not think of being beautifully displayed in a vase would look really, really nice as impressions. The biggest thing that you're looking for is texture. That's really the key. Things that have pretty ruffled edges are really, really nice. Things that have kind of a different depth layer. So leaves, for instance, are gonna have a really shallow depth layer because they're very, very thin. But flowers, lavender, all kinds of different plants have a little bit more volume to them as they grow. So you might use kind of a good variety to be able to make different impressions during your clay pieces for today. I'm only gonna select a few pieces per clay piece. So maybe anywhere between three to five. You can certainly use as many things as you want. This will really be determined by the actual shape of what you are working with. So if you're working with a nice round disc like I am for today, three to five pieces should be excellent if you're working with something a little bit larger or a little bit smaller. Or if your plants are a little bit larger or a little bit smaller than mine, it might dictate how many things that you use. So a couple of the things that I'm using for today one of my favorite things that I have to use today is this really pretty dried lavender. Now you can see this is a really good example of different texture depths. So I have really, really skinny, thin stems, but then I really have a nice lavender shape that grows on the very end. And you can see I even have different angles that are happening. This right here would be a beautiful arrangement just as I'm holding it on one of our clay impressions because it really looks very natural and I love all the different angles that are going with it. Little daisies, um, little just tiny flowers are really pretty as well. So you can see I have kind of some nice texture shapes that are happening right on the very edge of the flowers. And then uh, the stems again kind of overlap. You're gonna have a lot of different types of flowers that I will have different shapes to them, but I really like these little daisies because they're gonna work perfect for the size piece that I'm working on for today. Now we're gonna try a big mama flower. <laughs> this is something that I'm only gonna be able to use one of, but I really wanna see if I can capture those beautiful leaves that are kind of coming up and popping up off it. I love all the little line work. I love that I have just that one singular stem to kind of ground it on the piece. So this is gonna be something fun to play with for today. You can also use things like just plain leaves. Like this is a great leaf. I love the back of the leaf as well. You can really see the veins and everything that are in the shape. And the edges are something that's really fun. So if I take a couple of these and I layer them together, it's really gonna feel like a really fun piece and it might balance out where I have mostly flowers and my other pieces. You can also use just regular greenery. 
This is really fun. It doesn't need to be anything too fancy. You can literally go out in your backyard and see what kinds of things that you have growing or maybe you have a couple things from your garden that you might want to use and preserve in these little fossil plaques. But this is something that again, it's going to create a neat texture because the leaves are all growing out everywhere. We have these nice soft thin leaves but a thicker stem so that's something that will really get you that depth that I was talking about. But truly you can use anything so grab what plants that you're going to use and then we're going to get our clay out. I would have your plants arranged next to you on the table so you can kind of grab and play around with the arrangements as we're working and I'm going to have three balls of clay that can fit into the size of my hands. I'll show you. What we're gonna do first is we're gonna plot out the base of what our mold is gonna be for later. Now, the clay that we're gonna be using is gonna act as a cast and the plaster is gonna sit on top of that and kind of sink in so that when it dries, we can peel away the clay and really see a nice mold that's happening. So I'm gonna want a good amount of clay to start out with for this. When we flatten it, we're gonna want it to be about a half an inch to three quarters of an inch thick so that you have plenty of room to be able to push through your materials. So go on ahead and you can kind of flatten out using the palms of your hands. You can also flatten with a rolling pin if you have one of those on hand. See I have a nice thickness here. I have about a half of an inch to three quarters of an inch thickness all the way through. And I want to keep it relatively circular throughout. Now, before you get started laying in your design, you want to make sure that it fits the same size as your Tupperware. If there's a lot extra, you want to kind of give it a little trim before you get started. If it's too small, you definitely want to add more clay before you start pushing in anything to your mold. So what we're going to end up doing is we're going to take our flowers and we're going to be arranging them on the clay and then we're going to be pressing them in very gently into the clay surface until they're pretty much flush. We won't be able to get flush with each of the examples that I have for you today, but you're going to be able to get really close. The deeper that you're pushing into the clay, the further the imprint that you're going to get and in turn, the more of a raised effect that you're going to be able to get with the plaster later on. So you almost want to think about this as the reverse image of what you're going to see later on of our finished piece. And depending on if you're just using leaves, if you're using something really thin and delicate, like maybe some lavender, you will be able to push all the way through. If you're using something that's a little bit thicker, like this big flower, we might have a little bit more of the space that's left from the back side of the flower afterwards. But that's okay, because there's plenty of stuff, good stuff that's gonna be happening on the other side. Now, what I wanna do is I also wanna get out my little Tupperware that I was using before to make my dishes. And I'm gonna start by just kind of lightly squishing out my clay in a circular shape. I know in the long run I'm going for a circle shape because that's what my templates for my trays were made out of. We want at least a half inch or three quarters of an inch of thickness throughout the entire piece of clay. So you can really use your work surface to kind of tap it out if you'd like to. I think it's fine if you want to use a rolling pin or anything that would help you get a really smooth surface. We don't want a lot of divots because you have to remember that when we're working on this surface, really everything that's on your surface is something that's going to show up in your final product. So kind of tapping with your fingers and kind of getting that rough outline is totally fine to get started with. But as we go, I'm going to show you kind of tips and tricks on how to keep this nice and smooth and make sure that your final product is really pristine before we pour our plaster on top. So I'm going to go in ahead and just double check using this outer rim of my Tupperware that I have the size shape that I need to get started with. And I'm gonna go ahead and do that for my other two clay pieces. These are great for my working surface to start out with. You can see I have this nice same shape that's happening, the same size for each of my pieces. And some are a little bit more smooth than others. Like this, for instance, I would say needs to be smoothed out a little bit more before we go to pour the plaster on top. So there'll be plenty of time, we can do that together. 
Uh, but this one is looking pretty good, pretty smooth on the surface. No big cracks or divots or anything that's gonna really inhibit our final design. Truly make sure that it's not too big or too small compared to your template using your little Tupperware container and that you have at least a half inch of thickness going on your side of your clay piece all the way through. This is really important because we're gonna be pushing and imprinting our flowers and our leaves into these shapes. So if you don't have it thick enough, you're not gonna have enough room to have your clay stay stabilized on the back while also keeping enough room to have your flower or leaf shape being pushed through the top. All right, I'm gonna make sure that right in the center of my workspace is nice and clean and I'm gonna get my second mold out. Now this one, I want to try and do a really, really fun leaf shape. I'm gonna go ahead and start with a pretty big leaf and I'm actually gonna use the back side of the leaf because it has more texture to it. The front side of the leaf is pretty. I love the color green, but it doesn't have a lot going on on the very surface like the very back of it does. So I'm gonna go ahead and line it up I'm really happy with that arrangement there. I'm gonna go in ahead and take my piece of paper just really carefully and gently placing it on top, just like I did before with the flowers. And I'm not pressing really hard. Remember, you're just pressing enough so that your fingers can glide on the paper and you can feel those leaves or flowers, whatever you're using, start to sink into the clay. If you push too hard, your clay is going to expand and you might get an unevenness to the very top of your surface. We really want to try and keep that flat if we can. And remember, you can kind of lift and peek. Again, you can just nicely lift your little leaf shapes up. If you can't quite get to your shape without digging in, go on ahead and get your little tool back out. Leaves are nice because they're more likely to just pull off in that one swoop. I'm gonna go ahead and take a little bit of water just to fix that crease. So for this piece, I'm gonna go in with my lavender. I really love this because it's a little bit smaller than some of the other items that you might have. And it just makes it so nice to be able to place. You can almost add a few more of these. And even though they're all their own kind of little angle and shape, they still have that similarity of, of kind of what their shape it actually looks like. Their texture is gonna be so similar. I, I really love these. Again, I'm saving a little bit of room up at the top and the edges. I might sneak this little baby one in here. And then I'm gonna go through with my paper and just lightly start to press on the top. Where these are so small and they're not really overlapping, um, I don't mind pressing a couple more of them in at the same time, but if you feel more comfortable with the individual method, that's totally okay too. You can see already these have pretty easily sunk into the surface, so I'm just gonna keep kind of tweaking. I really wanna make sure that I get my stems, something like this, it's gonna have very, very tiny, thin, delicate stems. So. You really wanna make sure that you get a good impression right on that first pull. Okay, now just one at a time, I'm gonna go on ahead and pull them out. See my beautiful impressions that are left behind. Again, I'm gonna go in with my little tool and I'm gonna clean up everything in here so that I don't have any of that organic material showing. Now that I have my clay mold all set and ready to go, what I wanna do is I wanna create a template 
that's going to fit around that same shape. So again, we're using this as kind of a mold for our tray. And I have two sheets of aluminum foil that I'm gonna be using to mold around it. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm just gonna lightly kind of fold and crinkle around this shape. I wanna start in the middle of this tin foil and I don't wanna fold it too low to start out with because we don't want our walls to be too shallow so that we run out of room to put our plaster later on. Just to keep it even, I'm gonna kind of flip it around to the other side. That way I can pull a little bit tighter. Make sure my bottom is really, really flush with the bottom of this little container. And then I'm gonna go through and continue to fold this around. So I'm going through with the back side and just kind of smoothing out the very bottom of this canister and kind of up to where my ridges are, where if I were to put a lid on this Tupperware. And then I'm gonna go on ahead and fold down below that lip and create the final exterior wall for this. Once you have that, you can go ahead and loosen and pull out your Tupperware sheet. I'm just gonna go ahead and loosen the very bottom, making sure that I have plenty of room to place my clay mold. And then I'm gonna go ahead and place my clay mold in right on top. Now, if there's any little bits of room, you can go ahead and kind of squish that together. You want to try and keep your walls standing straight up and down. We don't want them leaning one way or the other because this is what's going to hold our plaster into place to create our final mold. And you want at least a half of an inch to three quarters of an inch of space from your where your clay mold stops up to where the top of your lip of your tray is. So you can see I'm pretty snug in there, which is good. I'm just gonna take my finger, I'm gonna add a little tiny bit of water, and I'm just gonna smooth out my edges so that they're really flush with the edge of my tray. This will prevent excess little bits of plaster seeping through. Make sure I get a really nice and smooth mold. This is also a great time too if you didn't already smooth out any of your little creases, you could go through and smooth out your any part, little imperfections that you had in your design. Next, I'm gonna mix up my plaster so that I can pour it into my mold and let it set. I have my little mixing bowl that has about three quarters of a cup of really chilled cold water in it. I have my spoon that I'm just gonna be using to stir and mix my plaster together. I have a quarter cup measuring cup in here. I know that with Plaster Paris, if you haven't used it before, this is what I'm going to be working with. And you want to be using about two parts of the plaster Paris to one part of the water. So I'm going to need about six of these scoops stirred in and I want to do it gradually. I don't want to just dump in six scoops right off of the bat because it'll be hard to make sure that my plaster is being mixed evenly and that I'm avoiding any clumps or air bubbles as I go. So I'm going to go ahead with my first scoop. And what I wanna do is I, I really wanna try and distribute it evenly along in the water. 
So I'm not just always filling in that one spot. That'll make it easier to stir together. I also wanna make sure I'm adding in just a little bit at a time. So I'm just gonna go in ahead and tap. And you can see what's happening right off the bat is the plaster is sinking directly to the bottom of this icy water. Now, that's great when we start out with because when we are going along, the more plaster that we mix in, the more it's gonna to start to turn into almost like a pudding texture instead of this milky texture like it is right now. So go ahead and make sure you're stirring right along in the bottom of the bowl and then slowly I'm just going to be adding in, trying to spread it out along the top of the water instead of just letting it sink in one spot. So you can see now my texture has really changed from that really like thin milky texture to something that's a little bit more like pudding. It's not quite as thick. One easy way to tell if you are thick enough is when I sprinkle my plaster on top now, you can see it's not sinking down to the bottom. It's really sticking on the very top of the surface. So once you have that all mixed up, double check that you don't have any little clumps or anything like that on the bottom. And go ahead and grab your mold so that we can pour our plaster right on top. Now I'm going for at least a quarter of an inch on my pour. A little bit more would be okay, but I wouldn't do any less. Once you have your mixture, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna gently tap it and this will even out the spread of my plaster along my mixture. And then you're gonna sit and let it wait. This should be all set to continue on with the next part of our project in about an hour. So now that I have had about an hour to let my plaster set, you can see the consistency on the top is really smooth. It's cool to the touch. And we are ready to start to take off our foil. So the first thing that I wanna do is I just wanna very carefully and slowly start to peel this away. We're not worried about preserving the tin foil whatsoever, but we do wanna be very gentle about where the plaster is meeting the sides so that we don't damage anything unnecessarily. We're just gonna gently lift the clay off of the bottom of our tin foil. And you can lay it down the opposite way so that the plaster is actually hitting the table. You can see what a nice seal that we've had here. There's gonna be some places where my plaster maybe seeped through a little bit that we can trim up and fix up a little bit with some sandpaper. But for now, we really just wanna peel off the clay. The goal here is we wanna be really, really gentle with the plaster at all times. And we want to try and just loosen the clay up on the edges first. So we start to see a little bit of that gapping. You can see my first little peak of my mold is starting to show through. But go slow and be really, really gentle. I like to kind of rotate and peel my clay off as I go. And there she is. You can see even my mold is still almost perfectly intact, which is great, but I have a mirror image of what I had laid down in the first place, even to the point where I have the little holes in my dried lavender showing through in our plaster casing. 
Now I'm gonna go ahead and just very gently sort of break off any plaster along the top edge just to give myself a head start with the sanding process. I wanna be really gentle. You don't wanna break it too much. I'm really just pinching along the very top and very lightly pulling away with my thumb to see what will give way. Plaster sands really, really well, so we don't have to worry too much about what's left behind. Now, my edges from where the tin foil were were are a little crinkled as well, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in with some sandpaper and I'm gonna smooth out the very top edge and I'm also gonna smooth out the side. Sandpaper that I'm gonna be using is just a fine grit sandpaper. You don't need to use anything too fancy for this. Um, the idea after you get anything out of your mold from here on out is that you really just wanna be super gentle with your whole surface. So I'm gonna work in smaller pieces of this sandpaper and I'm really just trying to get my kind of thumb pressed up against my little cylinder. And you can see without even too much sanding, we're already starting to get a smoother edge on the very top. I'm gonna go through the top edge first and kind of sand it out and get it to be a little bit more even. And I want it to be really smooth and flush with the very top of my design. When I get to my stems, I really want to get up close without being worried about chipping any parts of my stem off as I go. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to fold my sandpaper so that I have a really flat edge to work from. And that's how I'm going to go in and just kind of chisel away a little bit at sanding that part. really helpful to rotate the design as I go just so that I can really get the best angle for my dominant hand so whether you're a lefty or a righty I definitely continue to rotate this as you go so that you can get a really smooth finish around that edge your sandpaper is gonna start to get some of the plaster stuck to it we're actually working with semi wet plaster still right now you can tell by it being a sort of a grayed out white color. This kind of brownish white that it is right now is really from it being wet. So in 24 hours, this will be permanently dry and you won't have to be quite as gentle with your sides and with your top edge of your final product. But for now, like feel free to swap out your sandpaper as often as you need to, because if you're starting to get a lot of your plaster off on the edge it's really going to benefit you to switch to a fresh piece or maybe fold it and get a new side so that you can really continue to keep working and getting that nice flush edge pretty easily but this is nice when you work with plaster that is a little bit more damp like this one is you can even if you just feel it, you can tell it feels a little bit cooler than um, if it were to be totally dry. Uh, it actually is a little bit better for sanding because your dust particles don't fly up in the air as easily and it'll be a little bit easier to clean when you're all done. So I'm looking pretty good around my edges right now. What I wanna do next is I wanna start to clean up my sides. Now, when we're sanding, you wanna make sure that you keep your sandpaper pretty flush and you might find it helpful to work on the edge of a table something where you can really sand around but still have that flat surface underneath it's a little bit harder to hold this as you go um, and sometimes you can't get quite as flush against the table as you can if you have it sitting just off of it but go ahead and when you make your second round through um, I am taking kind of my pinky along and the back side of my hand along the bottom of my little ripped piece of sandpaper and I'm running that along the edge and I just like to go a little bit at a time so you can see right off the bat I have a much smoother side here and I'll continue to go through and kind of 
flatten out this edge so that it's a little bit less curved. And all of those tinfoil marks just totally go away. It doesn't go away all at once. Like for me to keep it a little bit more rounded as I go, I like to work in a continuous circle rather than spending too much time on any one spot as I go. Just with a little bit of sanding, how much smoother those edges have gotten. And now I have a very circular little disc. Once you are all done sanding and you've brushed off your dust on your fossils, that's it. Nice work. I hope you had fun making these and that they make either a good present or a nice keepsake of some flowers that you really, really love. Thanks for joining us for Muse to Go. I hope to see you guys again soon. <laughs>